Watch Dr. Drew's new show at 9 on HLN. Weeknights on HLN. I have successful Hollywood director Tom Shadiak. He was living the dream, at least as he thought it was at the time. Expensive houses, cars, private jets, but something was missing. Tom Shadiak says he was living a lie, and he finally decided to do something about it. I've got a bunch of questions. I watched your, yeah. your movie and stuff, so let's just start back at the beginning. Uh, you were a successful television producer. I was actually film director. Film, film director, film, director Ace producer. Ventura was my first film. And, and, and had, you, had you lived your dream at that point? Was that what you always wanted to do kind of thing? Well, uh, I, I lived the dream I think the culture had taught me you know, to, uh, to, to be successful. As an artist, that was a dream. It was a beautiful dream, you know, as an artist, to be able to tell a story, to make somebody laugh, to make somebody think. But what came with that dream, I think, was toxic, which is the more success you have, let that success be reflected in your lifestyle, a red carpet lifestyle with the jets and the homes and the things. And I found those things absolutely neutral. They weren't bad, and they certainly weren't good. They were neutral. And the problem was my culture had taught me that once you get there, there will be a there there. And there was no there there. I found my happiness level absolutely didn't improve an iota with that's, that. And so what did you do? Well, I began to question my life. Uh, for a while, I kind of just got co-opted into the dream, and I bought more stuff and, you know, and, and got a little further down that path. But eventually, I realized that I was, I was uh, being a bit hypocritical because um, on my moral side, I believed in the moral teachings, not in a dogmatic way of the Jesuses and the Gandhis who say, don't store up treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. And yet I found myself storing up plenty of treasures on earth. And they say you have to be empty to be full, but I was quite full. Did you know that about yourself before you accumulate all the stuff? Or the, was the accumulation what sort of brought that understanding no, I certainly out? Didn't, I didn't know that. Um, maybe on a very deep level I knew that, but I, I wasn't operating on that deep level. Um, but you, I, I felt something. When, when all this stuff came at me after Liar, Liar, is basically I, I did Ace, then Nutty Professor, then Liar, Liar, and then it all came. And I thought, this isn't right. You know, I'm an artist. I have a gift, I've been given a gift, and, and I should serve with that gift. And yet what I was doing was taking advantage of that and saying I, I own it and I'm more valuable, and I, and I built an economic life around that, which I think many of us are encouraged to do. Well, I, I, one thing, that was, it was all for yourself, for you. And, and I guess what I'm asking under, behind yeah. that question is, did you have a wife? Did you have children? Were there other people you were building well, on behalf of? I've got, a lo I've got a large family, not in the traditional sense. There have been people that I've sort of adopted informally along the way. Uh, but I had far too much. The question we don't ask ourselves is how much is enough? What do you need to make you happy? Well, I, I, I love the question, but before we go on to it, because I, I think when you think about it as a solitary person, it's different than when you think about it as a father. In other words, I'm worrying about paying for college education, paying for graduate school. I mean, that's, but, it's, I'm but, consumed with but that. To me, yeah. But to me, the fundamental question is the same. It's how much do you need? Now, I'm a father. That is part of my needs. I have to take care of my child. I have to feed them. But how much do I need to feed them? The problem is for us is we want to do the things that our very moral teachings tell us not to do, which is store up into barns. That's the greatest, you know, ar arguably one of the greatest moral teachings is the Sermon on the Mount. Don't even store up into barns. Consider the birds of the air. But we want to be safe for the rest of our lives, which is unheard of in nature. And so we've got to take more and more and more. It's, it's, uh, we make ourselves sick to lay up something for a sick day. That's what Thoreau said. And, and I, I don't want to reflect that kind of life. I want to have a relationship with you so that if, if I'm in need someday, because I didn't store up forever, maybe you'll meet my need because I've helped to meet your need. Got it. And yeah. so what have you done? What did you do? Well, I just started moving away from that kind of life, but found something much more powerful. And so I don't think about it as moving away. I gave up, you know, the first thing I gave up, the, the, the jet allowance. And, and, and so I was able to give a fair amount of money, you know, which the studio universe was very gracious to allow me to do that. I gave that away. And I sold the houses and began to downsize and got rid of most of my stuff and gave away larger and larger sums of money. And now I've retooled the way I do economy in my life. I don't want to stand on top of a picture and say, I'm more valuable than you, pay me more. But, but how much, I, I'm trying to, I think people at home would want to know exactly what you did. You, you gave it away to charities and how, Some? And how much did you give away? Uh, I don't have a figure, to be honest. You but I guess? gave. It's in the millions, but it's, it, that's looking at things in sort of a linear way. And I want the person at home to know what, whatever they do, even if it's bake a meal or share a smile or give someone dignity for a moment, it's the same thing. Is it? I, cause, Absolutely. Cause it could, because, because that's a really interesting point. Yeah. Now, we've we got a couple minutes here sure. just in this second. We're going to talk more. But to me, this whole thing turns around that point for, uh, for let's me. Let's talk about it. Okay. Which is that there are people out there becoming the UN ambassador for whatever yeah. and doing all these grandiose things for people. I'm not sure that is the same thing as 
putting your arm around somebody and taking them to a homeless shelter. It, simplest, simple selfless acts of service. Yeah. They can be on a large scale. Yeah. But oftentimes they're not. I, they? I agree, but it depends. I, I can't necessarily judge that ambassador because that may be his journey and his truth. But I think we as a culture tend to see those big things as the good things. Yeah. And the person who puts their arm around a homeless person and says, I want to know your story. We don't elevate that like we elevate the multi-billion dollar gifts that people in my industry give away. And they're the same thing. They can be the same thing. They can, they can be but the often they're not. And often they're sort of grandiose gestures. But let, let's, you've got a new documentary. It's kind of what we're talking about yeah. here. Yeah. It's called I Am. It explores this notion that our way of life is based on selfish materialism and that we need to wake up as a culture. So let's take a look at this first. This talk, here he is talking about his first house in Beverly Hills. When more film success came my way, I bought a bigger house and more stuff. I was flying privately everywhere, vacationing, looking for properties. But something odd happened to me when I moved into my first Beverly Hills house that kind of took the edge off my buzz. I was standing alone in the entrance foyer after the movers had just left, and I was struck with one very clear, very strange feeling. I was no happier. Right? Yeah. I, in your documentary, I noticed you point out that if you're cold in the woods and unhappy and miserable, yeah. and somebody brings you into a cabin and gives you a warm meal and a blanket, that's an increase in happiness. Yes. But to go from that cabin to your Beverly Hills house needn't necessarily create any happiness. That's right. And we've studied that now through positive psychology, and we know kind of the monetary levels where happiness is increased, and it's around fifty to $75,000.